These Jordan men and I got beef. Because, Bishop, what was you thinking? And Taj, stop trying to make fetch and essence happen. It ain't going to happen. What's good, y'all? She goes to Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Kingdom Business video. In this video, we're talking about the season one finale, episode number eight. Eight. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of my kingdom business content and conversations. This is wrapping up season one and we're jumping right into season two, which is currently premiering every Thursday on BET Plus. And this is quite, quite a season finale. Now, quick disclaimer, I am recording this after seeing episodes one and two from season two. So I do have a little bit of that knowledge as I go back and try to complete this series and have this conversation. But I'm going to keep the spoilers to a minimum and really just try to focus on what happened in this episode. But baby, when I tell you this is the perfect season finale for the season opener today provided us with season two, it just gets better and better and better. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Honestly, I don't know which Jordan man to start with, but I'm kind of leaning towards Bishop because, sir, I get wanting to be held accountable and atone for your sins. We saw this start to really take hold in last episode where he was, you know, wanting to confront things head on, wanting to be straightforward and honest, wanting to begin again with Zanita and really try to make their relationship work. He pointed out like they could literally start where they are. He has changed as a person. He has grown. He made a promise to God to do right. And he really started to question his potential involvement, whether indirectly or directly in in Danny's death and as he was trying to go around in the tone and he's like Danita we can make this work and she's like nah um you know he's trying to hold CJ back from trying to fight Saucer and she looks like she will never look at him the same and 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 he is not who she defended all of these years he's just the scumbag that everybody said that he was you know Taj has no rap for him so I saw this in episode seven like starting to build so it's like it made total sense how he got here but it's also like sir you do know that according to the good book you don't get to go to heaven if you do this and i would wonder if you do this in front of your entire congregation what the hell asterisk does that put on it because sir this is a heck of a lot a very rash decision and while it is that it's also like and thinking about the thought process of someone who feels like they don't have anything else to live for, who feels like they will never outrun their past or their past mistakes and has turned over a new leaf according to them and feels like nobody will ever see them outside of the poor decisions that they have made, then you can see how someone would arrive at this. Now, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that you should do it. I'm not advocating for it. But again, you can see how you can arrive here. And honestly, the moments leading up to him pulling this gun to his head and he literally looks over to Danita and it's like, it's all better this way. I think that he literally thinks that he is making himself pay for all of his bullshit while also freeing his family from the stigma, from the speculation, from all of the harm that his struggles his poor decisions his misgivings has caused all of them and it's it's a heavy and a complicated thing to actually you know to talk about and for all intents and purposes by the end of this you are really led to believe that calvin will be no more after he gives this sermon, he says that this is going to be his last sermon. He's not worthy of leading his flock and puts this gun to his head and pulls the trigger. And then the episode ends. Y'all, and that's the very, very last like three minutes. This episode is jam packed with just stuff that keeps you on the edge of your seat. And I'm on Calvin's head because suicide is never the answer. <sighs> now let's backtrack. Tosh. <laughs> You so good and almost too good. Like the layering in this, I'm gonna touch on Rebel real quick, but this part is not specifically about Rebel. Like Rebel is talking to Linda and she's like, oh, Tosh. Cause Linda asks like, what about what about him? Cause he's, you know, texting, calling, whatever. She's like, Tosh is too good. And she's like, are you trying to say too good for you? And I'm like, oh, 
We just hit a soft spot. We just hit a real thing. We're going to come back to that with little Miss Rebecca Bell. But that is such a great way to describe Tosh. He is so good. He is so considerate. He is so God-fearing. He is so loving. He is so passionate. He is so understanding. He is trying so hard at all times with everybody. And I get it. You so want to do the right thing, but the right thing is never going to be settling in a love that is not there. It is never going to be going along to get along within a relationship that does not fulfill you. It is never going to be the right thing to decide to be with your child's mother simply because they are your child's mother. And you know good and damn well, y'all are not on the same page, not in the same book, not on the same path, going to the same place. You are setting yourself up for the inevitable demise. You are prolonging the clear and again, inevitable. And along the way and prolonging it, more people get hurt and they get hurt deeper. Like Taj just stressed me out so bad because I don't give a dang on if Essence is pregnant. And I put a big if on it because I don't trust that Miss Mama is pregnant. Like, it's it's a little bit harder to track the time in reference to the show because there are weeks that go by in between episodes, so maybe. But also, y'all just had sex. It was one time. And I know I sound like the crazies of the comments who be like, it was one time. He ain't get to finish. All of that is very true. You could get pregnant on the first time, but like the God I serve. The God I serve would not do that to Tosh and me. Like, that is Rebels Man. That is Rebels Man. Like, Essence, you are a, 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 a speed bump, honey, on a journey to true happiness in romance. You are simply a speed bump. And I feel like you know it deep down, so you done pulled this pregnancy up out your behind. But you can go ahead and take that elsewhere. Like, Taj, you are battling with your feelings for Rebel that you know you had from the jump. And then wanting to honor this relationship. But you already knew before she said anything about a pregnancy or whatever. Even before Rebel kissed you. You knew that you and in, in, in Essence weren't on the same page. You knew that y'all don't want the same things. Y'all don't, hell, y'all don't even believe in the same things. Like this girl was laying you out because you wasn't trying to jump her bones at every given point. She could not respect your celibacy journey. She could not respect the fact that you want to give your body to your wife. Like that you have made certain decisions that lean into your religious faith and your morality. Like, huh? She don't get it. And then you meet Rebel, a woman of the night, of the streets, who is a little bit more in Essence's lane, but she also still gets it. She wants to change for the better. She's actually shifting into a lane that you're actually driving parallel to versus Essence's way that you know what all the way over there. I'm trying to do better about cussing because this is church people now, y'all. This is church people. I know a bunch of church people probably listening and I curse a lot. So I'm trying not to do no cussing anymore. I'm going to try. <laughs> I already recorded my 201 episode two. I mean, episode one of season two breakdown. So if y'all hear some cussing in that, I'm sorry. But from episode two, of season two on, we're going to chill out on the cussing. <sighs> Taj. Like, you could not be dumber in the moments that you decide to tell Rebel, we pregnant. She pregnant. We pregnant. We keeping it. All of that could be true, but you do not want this. And your feelings are valid. Your desires are valid. You matter. Whatever happens, if Essence is actually pregnant or not, you will figure it out. You will make it work. But you deciding to basically shutter all feelings that you have for Rebel and not actually explore that in the moment that you all need to give in to what this is that you're feeling and figure it the hell out because it will benefit both of y'all's lives. And you choosing not to and to shut it down immediately just so that you could tuck tail and fall into some goofy road that you had planned out for yourself because you have a vision for your life and you're going to stick to the vision at all costs even though the woman that's in the slot of mother of my children and wife ain't the woman that's supposed to be there like Taj I thought she was better than this but also I guess nobody is susceptible I mean nobody is immune to avoid the bullshit that is our human experience and sometimes our goofy mindsets that lead us astray like Taj for me has been such top tier echelon of man and I've been grappling with like rectifying how he is making decisions at the end of the season that is just like any other man <sighs> 
It's like, okay, Erica, maybe it's the problem is that you pedestalized Tosh and his ass got to come up off the pedestal. Dang, I can say the A word, huh? I'm trying, y'all. We all are work in progress now. <sighs> I just was so disappointed in Tosh and making the decision to double down in this relationship with Essence simply because she's pregnant. But I also get it. I 100% understand why he's doing it. I just hate that he's doing it. And this is like a great example of like what makes the story in Kingdom Business so great and the character development and how things play out because it just feels so authentic and raw and it elicits raw emotions from the audience. So the two Jordan men, yeah, I have just about had it with y'all, but clearly I'm still here and I'm still sad and I'm rooting for Taj to get his mind right because Essence is not it. She ain't never going to be it, baby. And unfortunately, in hearing the news that Taj is going to stay right where he at and that him and Essence is having a baby, this puts Rebel in a space of backsliding, sends her into a tailspin, if you will. But before I get there, like, Rebel is actually... At the start of this episode, in a good place. She's throwing out all the Zion stuff. He done ran off to Vegas, and he's pissed at Red Bull. And she's like, that's fine. Let's go ahead and pack all this stuff up, because this show is over any dang on way. And she's expressing to Linda how, you know, she was the catch, and she did this, and she's the one who's been putting a roof over their heads and pointing out all very valid facts. And very strong up until Linda questions her about Taj. And... I really, really loved the moment where she said, oh, Taj is too good. And Linda was like, well, are you saying too good for you? Because that's a very real thing. Like, can you imagine living your life where you know that you've made some questionable decisions? You know that you're leading your life in a way that doesn't feel good or happy to you, but it's helping you or you're making do with it, right? So it's literally the uncomfortable comfortableness of it all. It's like comfortable. It's the toxicity that you're actually comfortable with. So we get to a certain level in life in reference to that and we just kind of put up with it because it's it's something that we know it might not be the best it might not be what we're looking for but it is what it is and then we start to set our value level according to that and it's like okay well I'm living this way because this is what I deserve and whether you're a stripper trying to turn over a new leaf and walk in a different path and pursue music like rebel is or you're you know someone who lives in a messy house and maybe grew up in that way and like know that you or don't know that you deserve a clean and fresh space that's inspiring to you um there are various things that we we kind of settle for in life and we don't actually reach out our hands for that next thing because we don't feel like we are deserving of it so i thought that this point specifically just rang so true because that is how rebel kind of has been operating She's rejecting a lot of the positioning of her within the religious and gospel community by way of her career. And she doesn't actually see herself fitting. And part of it is like, cause she's not good enough, but it's not strong. Like it's also like, she doesn't believe these people. And she's also suffered trauma um, alongside some of these people. So it's a little bit more of like a conflict, but when it comes to Tosh specifically, it's not a conflict. She really believes that this man is too good for her. She believes that this man is better than her. She believes like, of all the people that she has come into contact with, he is way up here and everybody else is down here. And for a moment in singing Danny's song with him on stage and with him professing how much of a gift she is and like fully, you know, articulating what she could be, you know, actualizing as herself even if she wasn't playing small, right? And that one little split second of a moment, she got a glimpse of not only who she really is, but all that she could be. And she allowed herself to believe in it. But then, you know, in Zion walking up and, and confronting that, it like snatched her back into her real reality and her current mindset. So she's really grappling at the top of this episode with extinguishing the belief that Taj is too good for her and really trying to want to walk into a space of like oh no wait maybe he's just right for me maybe this is the person I should be around or be with maybe I do need a life that's more 
all consuming of like what my life looks like when I'm interacting with Taj, when I'm talking to Taj, when I'm making music with Taj versus the struggle and the strife and the drama that comes all the other times in my life. And I think it's such a beautiful like transition says struggle to watch specifically with rebels character when they go to have coffee that next morning you could cut the tension with a knife but it is so damn beautiful and like ladies y'all tell me if i'm wrong but why in the hell was tosh dipping that dang on tea bag that way like why was that very very sexy i was like uh uh-uh, oh sir 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 Everything about this whole little coffee scene was so sexy. They dancing around the fact that they both are very much so into each other. They both are not checking for their current situations. And they're trying to drop hits and allude to it. And I'm just like, if y'all don't get to get in together. Because the tension is stressing me out. It is so clear. Y'all are each other's. Rebel, that's your man. Taj, this your woman. Everything else is noise annoying noise but y'all we can't even live in that for too long because we get to Danita's damn listening party and essence is flying back specifically for it and she drops the damn bomb that she's pregnant and then taj decides that he gonna be a good man and runs with it so when he sees rebel next in the studio after sees a hire sam to be her producer and she's all excited and she's all close and they get a little flirty he pulling the back giving all types of wrong ass energy and part of me wanted rebel to like get that he is saying a bunch of things that he doesn't really want to say because you could feel that like you could see that but also in being the in the current state that she's in right being raw and finally putting herself out in this vulnerable way to this man who for all intents and purposes has been on this pedestal for you and you're finally feeling like you're you know on his level and you're going to you know go for it even if she's taking these little baby steps into the waters of Taj and then for him to be pulling back so so severely it's like a complete 180 from the coffee shop and then to drop the bomb of he's having a baby and to drop the bomb of he's staying with essence because i honestly feel like the baby didn't even shake her it was literally when he was like we doing this and i shouldn't have said that we weren't right for each other what you mean you shouldn't have said it that's what the hell you meant like we were being honest and truthful to one another so i co- i totally understand how rebel was like taking a bag and she's already in a very raw and vulnerable place to even be kind of tiptoeing to pursue something with Taj so while I wanted her to like see through the BS with him I totally get how she couldn't and then she's so deeply hurt by this that she takes her behind to a bar gets drunk starts flirting with some rando and then kissing on some other rando then gets approached by a fan and reminded of how impactful and beautiful her talent and her whole soul is then she got to get chastised by caesar because the whole damn gospel community saw what she did last night because girl we are in 2022 2023 honey and Yes, everybody's putting everything online. You a person of notes doing this goofy stuff. It's like, uh the pain of watching Rebel run back to the toxic bullshit that never served her but feels so comfortable to her is so hard to watch. But it's gut checking for me as an audience member because it really makes me wonder or like just start to reflect on my life of like when are the times that I'm running back to my comfortability that doesn't serve me. And honestly, if I'm going to be like 100% honest, I'm doing it right now. I'm giving myself this weekend to eat a bunch of crazy junk that is like staples from back home. Like I'm eating cup of noodles and like chips and stuff that I had like sworn off of. October was a solid month for me on a tangent note y'all was a solid month for me and like working out and like switching up my diet I felt so good like things were just really clicking and then a couple things happened and I'm like emotionally drained and now I have reverted back to bullshit and I know it so that's why I'm giving myself this weekend to push out content and eat a bunch of junk and it's like even in this moment I'm running back to things that don't make me feel good like food that doesn't make me feel as good as the food that I was eating before routines that and habits that don't you know put me in a great place that I want to be in or that the woman that I want to be is going to operate and flourish best in but it happens and 
to be rewatching it in this moment. It's just like it's so clear. You hate that for her, but it's clear why she did it. It's clear of how she did it. <sighs> and it's unfortunate. Now, Caesar comes up with the idea of getting her baptized as a way of saving her career. And like while I'm there for Taj to be there and the audience to support her, why in the hell did you bring Essence? Why is she here? Because you already know that this is a thing. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you trying to be too good, Taj. And, like, this is not it. I mean, low-key, him being here at the at the baptismal kept him from being at church where his dad tried to off him damn self, which I guess good for that because it could have got a lot more complicated. Taj could have been the one. Anyway, but when I saw Essence sitting right next to him and she's talking about, babe, let's get baptized together. It'll be fun. <sighs> Taj, this woman cannot tell you in more ways that she is not the one for you. And your goofy behind is still sitting here. Ultimately, Rebel decides not to get baptized because she's not ready. She has not changed. And you know what? I have so much respect for her in making that decision because it's a very hard and at the moment a embarrassing decision. But it was the right decision to make. Regardless of how stressed Caesar is because of it, it was the right decision to make. Like I said, y'all, this episode has so much going on. And on a season note, he goes and lets Danita know, like, you did not acknowledge me at your listening party. I am not on the cover of this new remastered album. You basically lied. And it's okay, girl, because I'm not dropping an injunction. And I'm going to take your son. And he's going to help me build Redeeming Records to be bigger than Kingdom One ever was. Take that, take that, take that. And Danita deserves it. <sighs> Sasha needs to burn in hell. I'm not even gonna hold you. Deacon, I want you to keep your foot on Danita neck. Um, this chief police also needs to burn in hell because he definitely has something to do with Danny's death. And that's just like my little sum up of what is going on in this episode, y'all. I talked about the things that was most important to me. <laughs> Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below because this video is getting a lot longer than I anticipated it being. And y'all, with that said, that's gonna wrap up season one. And we can jump right on into season two, which is already, already off to a phenomenal start. I got the video link for you right here to jump into my episode one breakdown for season two. Get into it. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you over there.